السلام علیکم میرا نام ہے ایلن کیسلر میں امریکہ میں بیٹھ کر ہمیشہ پاکستان کے بارے میں سوچتا رہتا ہوں کیونکہ پاکستان ایک عام ملک نہیں ہے لیکن وہ جگہ ہے جہاں انشاءاللہ شاء عالمگیر امن قائم ہو جائے گا پاک اسلام قائم ہو جائے گا جس کا مطلب ہے محبت انصاف سچائی دوسروں کی خدمت اور اللہ پاک کی خدمت اور ذکر تو کل انگریزی چیٹ میں میں نے بات کی تھی کہ عورتیں ہی عالمگیر امن قائم کر دیں گی اور میں نے بتایا تھا ایک کہانی بھی کہانی نے میرے ایک دوست نے مجھے بتایا تھا اس کا نام ہے ویسلی آریہ راجا جو شری لنکا کے ہیں اور جنہوں نے جس نے دوست ہے لیکن اس کو میں بہت عزت دیتا ہوں تو اس لیے کہتا ہوں انہوں نے ایک عجیب بات مجھے بتائی تھی کہ وہ پادری کرسچن پادری پاسبان پریسٹ آپ کہہ سکتے ہیں بلکہ میتھڈسٹ چرچ میں پروٹسٹنٹ چرچ میں میں بھی بچپن میں میتھڈسٹ تھا میرے والد صاحب بھی اور میتھڈسٹ منسٹر میرا دادا بھی تو ویسلی آریہ راجا شری لنکا کے ہیں لیکن وہ بہت بہت ابل درجہ کے انسان ہیں میرے نزدیک وہ انٹر فیت مطلب مختلف مذاہب کے لوگوں کو ساتھ میں لانا ان سب میں پیار بھرانا وہ یہ کام کرتے تھے اور کانفرنس بہت سارے کانفرنس بھی انٹر فیت کانفرنس مطلب جس میں مختلف مذاہب کے لوگوں کو وہ بلاتے تھے صرف وہ نہیں بلکہ بڑے ادارے کے لیے وہ یہ کام کر رہے تھے تو اس نے بتایا تھا کہ ان کانفرنسوں میں میں نے بارہ بار دیکھا کہ جو بڑے مذہبی لیڈر ہیں وہ ایک دوسرے کے ساتھ جب بیٹھ کر اس کے بارے میں بات کرتے تھے وہ کبھی کامیاب نہیں ہوتے تھے میں کامیاب نہیں ہوتا تھا ان کوششوں میں ان کانفرنس میں کیونکہ ہر ایک جو بڑا لیڈر ہے وہ اپنے مذہب کو زیادہ اچھا سمجھ کر کمپرومائز کرنے کے لیے تیار نہیں ہوتے تھے جو اپنے مذہب کے کیا ڈاکٹرنس ڈاگمز پتہ نہیں اردو میں اس کو کیا کہتے ہیں اصول یا قانون انہی پر وہ پکا رہنا چاہتے تھے اور وہ دوسروں سے ایسے کمپرومائز کرنے کے لیے تیار نہیں ہوتے تھے بلکہ یہاں تک کہ کبھی دوسرے سے ناراض بھی ہوتے تھے اور زور سے بولنا بھی بات کرنا شروع کرتے تھے تو ایک بار پہلے بار جب اس نے ایک کانفرنس صرف عورتوں کے لیے چلایا تھا بنایا تھا تو وہ ایک ہی مرد تھا اس کانفرنس میں باقی سب عورتیں تھیں تو وہ حیران ہو گیا تھا اس نے مجھے بتایا جب وہ شروع ہوا تھا وہ کانفرنس ایک دم فوراً ہی یہ سب عورتیں پیار سے بات کر رہی تھی سب جیسے ہم لڑنے کے لیے نہیں آئی ہیں بات کرنے کے لیے ایک دوسروں کو سمجھنے کے لیے اور وہ سب سے فائدہ مند کانفرنس ہو ہی رہا جس میں صرف عورتیں تھیں تو جب میں نے یہ بات سنی میں نے سمجھ لیا کہ جو اس سے پہلے بھی میں یہ سوچتا تھا کہ عورتیں ہی عالمگیر امن قائم کر دیں گی پھر میں نے سمجھ لیا ہاں یہ بالکل صحیح ہے بالکل حقیقی ہے کیونکہ مرد تو لڑتے ہیں ایک دوسرے سے جب کہ عورتیں کم عورتیں بھی کبھی لڑتی ہیں لیکن بہت کم تو قید اعظم رحمت اللہ نے بھی بتایا تھا 
कि पाकिस्तान कामयाब हो जाएगा जब औरतें अपने सही पोजीशन लेती हैं जब वो ऊपर आती हैं और अपने पाकिस्तान के लिए जो वो कर सकती हैं वो करती हैं फिर पाकिस्तान कामयाब हो जाएगा मतलब है क्योंकि मैं मानता हूँ पाकिस्तान की कामयाबी का मतलब है आलमगीर अमन कायम कर देगा पाकिस्तान तो इसका मतलब है फिर पाकिस्तानी औरतें ही ज़्यादातर और दूसरे मुल्कों के भी लेकिन पाकिस्तानी औरतों के लिए के लिए ये बहुत ज़रूरी बात है कि आप सब सोच लो सोच लें कि हम कैसे अमन कायम कर सकती हैं पाकिस्तान में और फिर पूरी दुनिया में <laughs> अच्छा मैं बस यही बात करना चाह रहा था क्योंकि मैं बस ऐसे ही मैं मैंने फैसला नहीं किया मैं ये ऐसे बार करूँगा लेकिन मैंने अभी ही जस्ट इस चैट शुरू करने से तीन चार दो तीन मिनट पहले मैं सोच रहा था क्या क्या चैट मुझे करना चाहिए आज तो ये जवाब बिल्कुल साफ आ गया यही बात लिखो <laughs> औरतें ही औरतें ही आलमगीर अमन कायम कर देंगी ठीक है देखेंगे किसी के कोई अच्छे सवाल है या कमेंट्स अच्छा सुधीर अहमद कह रहा है अस्सलाम वालेकुम रिस्पेक्टेड बाबा जी हैप्पी टू बी पार्ट ऑफ यू योर लाइव स्ट्रीम एंड ऑलवेज फीलिंग पॉजिटिव आफ्टर लिसनिंग यू शुक्रिया अगर आप उर्दू में या अंग्रेजी में दोनों ठीक है लेकिन मैं ज़्यादा भी उर्दू में जवाब दूंगा Sudhir Ahmed Age kar raha hai pre peace should be established doesn't matter whether men or women establish it today what we are missing around the world is peace ha bilkul aapne theek bataya koi farak nahi padega auratein ya mard is salam ki raman ko qaim kar denge lekin auratein karengi mard bhi dono milkar lekin jab auratein leader bante hain jab zyada औरतें की हाथ में ताकत आती है सियासी ताकत भी शायद लेकिन ज्यादातर मजहबी लीडर क्योंकि बहुत कम मजहबी लीडर औरतें हैं हर एक मजहब में ज्यादातर मर्द सब बड़े हैं ये बल्कि यहाँ तक ऐसे कुछ ऐसे मजाब हैं जिनमें लोग कहते हैं कि औरतें लीडर नहीं बन सकती हैं मुर्शद नहीं बन सकती हैं या लेकिन हकीकत में औरतें की औरतों की बड़ी जरूरत है मजाहब में उनको बड़ा पोजीशन दिए जाना चाहिए ये बहुत जरूरी है फिर आलमगीर अमन कायम हो सकते हैं मेरा कोई शक नहीं है ये इसलिए बिल्कुल ठीक आपने बताया सुधीर अहमद जी लेकिन इस बात को भी याद किया जाना चाहिए कि जब तक औरतों को अपने पोजीशन नहीं दिया जाता है जिसमें वो ये कर सकती हैं आलमगीर अमन नहीं आ जाएगा अच्छा जोहेब खान अच्छा कह रहे हैं अच्छा वो फिर ऑटोमेटिकली ट्रांसलेटेड पता नहीं गूगल क्यों ये बंद नहीं करता है जब मैंने कोशिश की थी इसके अच्छा सुधीर अहमद आप बहुत अच्छी बातें हमेशा करते हैं वी आर रियली लुकिंग फॉरवर्ड टू हैव पीस एवरीवेयर इन द वर्ल्ड बट एट द सेम टाइम वी हैव टू फेस रेजिस्टेंस ऑन बी हैव ऑफ दिलूमिनाटी यस बेशक आलमगीर अमन का सबसे बड़ा दुश्मन है एलूमिनाटी एलूमिनाटी का मतलब है शैतान के चमचे तो शैतान का दजाल का इन सब शैतानी लोगों का तरीका है धोखा झूठ लड़ाई एक दूसरों से लड़ाना ये तो अलूमनाती का काम करने का तरीका ही है शैतान का बुनियादी <laughs> मकसद है एक कुछ लोग दूसरों से लड़ाना तो बेशक आप बिल्कुल सही बता रहे हैं ये लूमनाटी लोग जो नाम नहाद में उसको लूमनाटी लूमनाटी मतलब रोशनी रोशनी में जो है वो अंधेरे में है लेकिन यही लोग बेशक आलमगीर अमन वो आलमगीर अमन चाहते हैं लेकिन अपने ही वो एक वन वर्ल्ड ऑर्डर वन वर्ल्ड गवर्नमेंट चाहते हैं लेकिन जो उनके ही कब्जे में है और वो वो कहते हैं अमन आलमगीर अमन लेकिन हकीकत में वो चाहते हैं कि सब लोग बस उनके कब्जे में आ जाएं 
तो ये अन अमन नहीं होगा अमन का मतलब है जब आज़ादी है जब लोग लोगों को ज़बरदस्ती किसी चीज़ में नहीं लाते वो ज़बरदस्ती लोगों को अपने नाम नहाद आलमगीर अमन में लाना चाहते हैं तो उससे भी हमें होशियार रहना चाहिए खबरदार ऐसे आलमगीर अमन हमें नहीं चाहिए जो ज़बरदस्ती लोगों को आ, क्या बोलते हैं उसको डिस इन्फॉर्मेशन जान बूझ से झूठी बातें फैलाई जाती हैं इससे हमें होशियार रहना चाहिए बचना चाहिए कि लोग ऐसे ही करते रहेंगे अच्छा सुधीर अहमद भैर बता रहे हैं थैंक यू योर कॉन्वर्सेशन इज रियली प्रोवाइड स्पिरिचुअल फूड एंड कंपेल अस टू थिंक अबाउट यूनिवर्सल पीस एंड ब्रदरहुड यस वी मस्ट थिंक अबाउट यूनिवर्सल यूनिवर्सल पीस एंड सिस्टरहुड आल्सो ब्रदरहुड एंड सिस्टरहुड बट वुमेन आर द वंस हु आर गोइंग टू ब्रिंग अबाउट वर्ल्ड पीस आई हैव नो डाउट कोई शक नहीं है मेरे मुझे ये बताया गया है तो मैं ट्रू अग्री इट्स दी वेमेन हु डू अप ब्रिंगिंग एंड शी कैन ब्रॉट द चेंज हाँ बिल्कुल सही है सुधीर अहमद इफ इट वर हैपन वट यू आर सेंग एंड इन शाह इट विल हैपन आई बिलीव बट पर हैप्स वी वोट बी एबल टू सी दिस हम देखेंगे मुझे मालूम नहीं कितना देर लगेगा लेकिन ये हकीकत है Samira Baig the first priority is that they should focus on their children. Ha. Jab tak bachon ko is baat ko samajh maine jab bachon ye baat ko nahi samajhte hain bachpan se hi ye bachon ko sikhaya jana chahiye ki hum sab ek hi hain. Hum sab ek hi malik ke bande hain. Ye jo mukhtalif mazahib hain haqeeqat mein ye ek hi din ke hisse hain. Kyunki jab tak usne naam kya Hanskun हांसकोंग एक जर्मन के थियोलॉजन है तो उन्होंने बताया था देर वी नो पीस इन द वर्ल्ड इन टिल देर इज पीस अमंग द रिलीजन्स ये हकीकत है जब तक मजाहब में अमन नहीं होते हैं तब तक दुनिया में अमन कायम नहीं होगी हो गया होगा तो बच्चों को सक कि हमारा मजहब बहुत अच्छा है हमारे मजहब दूसरों से ज्यादा अच्छा है दूसरे मजाहब के लोग हमारे मजहब में आना चाहिए तो बच्चे ऐसे ही सोचते हैं फिर और इतने ये बात दिल की गहराई में जाती है कि वो बाद में उसको तब्दील करना बहुत मुश्किल होता है तो जब बच्चों को सिखाया जाता है कि एक ही मालक है सबके फिर वो और कौन ये बच्चों को सिखाएगी <laughs> ज्यादातर उनकी माँ औरतें तो बिल्कुल बहुत अच्छी बात है औरतों को अपने बच्चों को सिखाना चाहिए कि अमन ज़रूरी है आलमगीर अमन और आलमगीर अमन कैसे कायम हो जाएगा जब मुख्तलफ मजाहब के लोग समझते हैं कि हम सब के मजहब दीन एक ही है हम दूसरे मजाहब के लोगों से अलग नहीं है सब हमारे भाई बहन हैं फिर वो ही बच्चे बिल्कुल ठीक है शुक्रिया माँ के गोद एक दरस है बिल्कुल सही इब्राहिम अब्बासी पूछ रहे हैं सर वेन यू कम इन पाकिस्तान मैं कोशिश कर रहा हूँ इसी साल में शायद अक्टूबर में मैं दुआ कर रहा हूँ अगर अल्लाह चाहता है कि मैं अक्टूबर तक पाकिस्तान में और मेरी बेगम भी सेहत ठीक होगी और वो भी आ सकेगी हम दोनों आएंगे इन शक्टूबर में उसके लिए हम कोशिश कर रहे हैं शायद उससे पहले भी शायद उसके बाद भी लेकिन जो मालिक चाहता है वही होता है हम जो चाहते हैं वो कभी होता है कभी नहीं होता रजा वाइस कह रहे हैं प्यारा बाबा जान अस्सलाम असलकुम बाबा जान औरतें बहुत पहले ज़माने में मर्दों को गुलाम बनाकर रखा अच्छा इन पर बहुत जुल्म किया अगर औरतें दोबारा मर्दों पर जुल्म न शुरू कर दें फिर क्या फिर क्या होगा अच्छा ये मुझे मालूम नहीं था कि राजा अवैस कह रहा है कि पहले ज़माने में औरतें मर्दों को गुलाम बनाकर रखा अच्छा 
और इन पर बहुत जुल्म किया ये तो मुझे मालूम नहीं हकीकत है या नहीं लेकिन एक बात में कोई शक नहीं है कि इसी जमाने में और काफ़ी टाइम से पुराने जमाने में भी जहाँ तक मुझे मालूम है जहाँ तक हमारे पास हिस्ट्री है कि मर्दों ने गुलाम औरतों को बनाया और अभी भी औरतों पर बहुत जुल्म किए जा रहे हैं मर्दों के जरिए तो पहले ऐसे हो सकता है मैं ये नहीं कह रहा हूँ कि ये गलत बात है लेकिन मैंने नहीं सुना हाँ ऐसे कोई कहानियाँ हैं अमेजॉन्स के बारे में ऐसे बोले कि लेकिन वो शायद हकीकत हो सकता है शायद हकीकत नहीं है लेकिन एक बात में कोई शक नहीं है कि मर्दों ने औरतों को गुलाम बनाकर उन पर बहुत जुल्म किया है तो औरतों को टाइम दे दो देखो वो क्या करती हैं अभी <laughs> किसी को गुलाम बनाने के सवाल नहीं है औरत औरतें मर्दों को गुलाम नहीं बनाएंगी लेकिन दोनों साथ काम करेंगे लेकिन अभी क्योंकि औरतों का पोजीशन बहुत नीचे हो गया है जब औरतें ऊपर आती हैं और मर्दों से ज़्यादा नहीं लेकिन मर्दों के बराबर होती है फिर वही हो जा सकता है अमल आलमगीर अमन लेकिन इसमें मेरे कोई शक नहीं है औरतें लीडर बनेंगी और वो ज़्यादातर ये काम करेगी करेंगी आलमगीर अमन कायम करने का अच्छा जवार सलाम वाई आर यू सो होपफुल दैट पाकिस्तान विल ब्रिंग पीस इन द वर्ल्ड वी पाकिस्तानी एज नेशन आर द लोएस्ट ऑफ देयर मोरलिटी दिस नेशन इज पॉइजन बाई करप्शन येस इट इज़ ट्रू पाकिस्तान हैज़ बिन पॉइजन बाई करप्शन मैनी प्लेस इन द वर्ल्ड बट स्पेशली नो डाउट पाकिस्तान हैज़ बिन वेरी करप्ट द लीडर्स मोस्टली इन द रिसेंट पास्ट है एक्सट्रीमली करप्ट टोटली करप्ट आई वॉन्ट इवन talk about them by name but we know that some one of them was even called Mr 10% because he would take 10% for his personal financial gain out of every business transaction he could <laughs> so extremely corrupt uh, but Imran Khan the current prime minister he is not corrupt so the poison is beginning to uh, be counteracted it starts from the top if the top person is corrupt everybody else will be corrupt if the top person uh prime minister or president or king or whatever or queen <laughs> is corrupt everyone will be corrupt if that person is not corrupt gradually the corruption will decrease so uh why are pakistan if you think pakistanis are at the lowest of the morality i don't think so i think pakistanis are actually good people there is a lot of corruption in the system but uh Why am I so hopeful that Pakistanis will bring peace in the world? <laughs> Because I have been told. That's all I can say. Uh, so you may ask, who told me and how they told me? <laughs> well, I heard the voice of a great Sufi saint telling me this, and more than one. So. Don't worry. In fact, I have been told that the reason why Pakistan is so corrupt, the reason why there is so much, uh, what's the right word? Degradation may be the right word, but uh, well, they say terrorism <laughs> was in Pakistan was because, uh, just like in Arabia, when the Holy Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, appeared, Arabia was the most degraded. the most ignorant place in the world so therefore holy prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam appeared there so that nobody could say <laughs> that this incredible brilliant civilization the civilization of islam islamic civilization came because it started in a elevated place <laughs> so this proves the power of god so similarly Pakistan will bring peace in the world so nobody will be able to say that Pakistan brought peace in the world because Pakistan was such a peaceful place <laughs> no and there was so much corruption in Pakistan so when it becomes the land of the pure <laughs> and when it becomes the cause of world peace love especially love between people of different religions especially Sikhs and Muslims when there is love established no one will be able to say that's we all oh, these six and muslims they always loved each other so it wasn't a big thing that they brought about this love and unity and world peace <laughs> that is just the opposite huh? 
because of this degradation and corruption and hatred between people, especially Sikh and Muslim communities. When that love is established, that peace is established, then no one will be able to say it was from any other cause than the mercy of God. <laughs> Samira Beg. Tarbiya is the key which is missing because it's not executed effectively. Correct. Uh, Yasmin Farid says, Assalamu alaikum. Why people aren't kind to each other? Some of them are kind, but most of them aren't. Their behavior and unkind words are killing people. Why people don't want to be in peace? Why people don't follow the teachings of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? They say they love him. They are willing to do everything for him, but they actually don't. Yes, a very good point. Yes, means you understand correctly uh, that people should be loving. They should be following the example of Holy Prophet, peace be upon him, who was so loving to everyone. Uh, so why aren't they doing it? Because we have free will. We are free to do what we want. God gives us that freedom to choose whether we will serve Him, surrender to Him, His guidance and the guidance of the Holy Prophets. Uh, peace be upon them all. And if we choose not to, then we will be selfish, unkind. And uh, that is the sad situation in much of the world. But don't worry. Universal peace is coming. People will become kind to each other. So you begin, you be kind. Your friends and family members uh, will see your kindness and then they will also be influenced by that and they will become kind too. And this is how uh, world peace will be spread. So you can do that yourself and you will see others also, <laughs> inshallah. Mem Zahid Chaudhary, please pray for me, sir. Ya Allah, Zahid Chaudhary, Parraham Farma. Okay, Sudhir Ahmed says, the world is facing economic problems. What is the solution of this problem? And how can we improve our economy? We have been listening to this since childhood, that in future, the economic conditions will be We've been listening since childhood that in the future economic conditions will be much better, but it's getting down and down with the passage of time, and people are dramatically going down the line of poverty and unemployment. When it will be improved? Well, first, there are two things you must understand. The reason why the economic conditions are getting worse, not only Pakistan, all over the world, uh, mostly, it's because the banks, the international banksters, are sucking out the wealth through bribing government officials and uh, letting them loot the country. Uh, that's one of the biggest causes. Um, so that that's the real reason. There's a book, uh, what's his name now? John Perkins wrote a book called uh, Confessions of an Economic Hitman, which shows this how a few very selfish and anyway don't want to talk too much about them but there are some countries in my own country even the United States and other countries and they have set up a system uh, in which they are able to use bribery and threats first they bribe the government leaders of all the other countries and if they succumb then they do what they want then they let them loot the country and they get a big share of all the wealth and they gain control over that country by getting them in debt. Then when they have to pay back the interest at least on the loan and they cannot do it, then they can make structural adjustments. They can require those countries to do what they want. And what are their structural adjustments? It's make the people poorer and make them, the international bankers, richer. So this is what's going on. And if they cannot bribe the leaders, because the leaders are unbribable, then they uh, try to replace them. They try to get some other corrupt leader to become in their place, the leader of their country. And then if they even fail in that, then they simply kill them. And they've killed so many people who they could not control or remove by bribery or other means. So this is the main reason. Of course, uh, 
the dramatic poverty going down more and more, it's because the system is set up in that way. And these international banksters, they have central banks. The central banks print the money, actually. They say the government's doing it, but actually the bankers, the government may print the money, but they, uh, the money is then lent to the government. And then the government has to pay back <laughs> interest on those loans, as they call them. Even the money, what to speak of the other types of loans, this is going on. So this is why the whole world is becoming impoverished, or was becoming impoverished. <laughs> and these international banksters, they're not bankers, they're gangsters. International banksters have become more and more wealthy, but now it's being reversed. So, when will it happen? It's already started. President Trump has now basically taken over the Federal Reserve Bank. It's, it's called Federal Reserve Bank, but it's not a government bank, it's a private bank. It was a private bank, owned especially by the Rothschilds and Rockefellers and these other international banksters. So now President Trump actually has regained control of that bank, so things are improving. But it takes time. And in fact, the media has not even reported this, so people don't even know this has happened. But it's actually, you'll see, President Trump is actually a wonderful person. Despite his weaknesses, he is sincere, and he is working very courageously to oppose these international banksters. And he is succeeding, but they are screaming bloody murder. <laughs> the press is saying every bad thing they can about President Trump. Because why? Because the, the mass media is owned by the same uh, cabal, these international banksters and their cohorts. So they're doing everything they can to stop Trump. That's why they're saying everything bad about him. But actually, I have no doubt at all. Although I did not vote for him at that time, I was not convinced. Maybe I will. I don't know. I haven't decided for sure. But I think I will vote for him because I see that he is actually sincere. He is struggling very valiantly against these very, very powerful and wealthy uh, Satanists, really. They control the whole world's economy. They control the mass media. They have control the educational systems of the world, they control the scientific establishments, medical establishments particularly, pharmaceutical <laughs> medical system, and they've tried to destroy all the indigenous medical systems like Unani system. They put it down and they're promoting the pharmaceutical medical system. So they are so powerful and so evil. But President Trump is fighting against them and I think Prime Minister Imran Khan is also uh, working for the same goal to establish truth. Yes. And uh, that is the end of this cabal, which is based on untruth and injustice. <laughs> it's based on deceit and disinformation. So when will it happen? When will the economic... I think it won't be so long, but it is coming, definitely. Saima Qureshi, education is the answer, academic and religious. Yes, very good point. The answer is to train the children and the young people uh, and everyone, both in the schools and in the religious institutions, religious schools. Yes, thank you very much. Very, good, very true and insightful comment. Okay. Sudhir Ahmed said, Thanks, respected Babaji. Convey my regards to all the people who are part of this Pak Rasta. Stay safe and stay blessed, Amin. Enjoy your time and have a good time ahead. Thank you very much, Sudhir Ahmedji. Khan Shwab Alam Sarwani says, Love you, brother. Thank you very much. I love you too. Murtaza Jat Salam. Inbox me your WhatsApp number. I do not use WhatsApp. Ibrahim Abbasi, Inshallah, we are waiting for you. Thank you very much. He's talking about coming to Pakistan. Inshallah, October may hum. Asakenge. Dekenge, Allah chanta hai, mujhe ne malum hai. Khawla Umar says, Assalamu alaikum, Mr. Kiesler, how are you? Mein bilkul thik thak hoon. Allah ka shukar hai. Achha, Ali Abbas, why do you love Pakistan? How this story goes from where it started? So I have told this story, and in fact, um, many, many times, and I've started a question and answers, a fact, frequently asked questions on my Alan Kiesler, uh, what's it called now, public figure, 
Facebook page. So I think I've answered that question there about how I heard back in about 1983, 82 or 83, I heard a voice saying, Pakistan the matlab ay, oh Pakistan jithe huzuri pak, ude pak musahib de naal, islami pak phir kaim kar denge. To, <laughs> Pakistan se pyar kyun nahi karunga, agar Pakistan mein pak islam phir kaim ho jayega. So that is why I love Pakistan, because pure Islam, meaning love and truth and justice, will be re-established in Pakistan, inshallah. And it is God's will. <laughs> it will happen. I have no doubt. Acha Khan Shoaib Alam Sarwani says, Mene galti ki thi, mene chashme ne laya. Uh, Achha, YouTube ye uh, naam lik ke search kare aapko in ki videos or a story mil jayegi समझ में नहीं आ रहा किसके बारे में आप बात कर रहे हैं अच्छा समझ गया अली अब्बास को खान शुएब अलम जवाब दे रहा है कि मेरे वीडियोस को सर्च करें हां मैंने बारंबार ये पूरी कहानी बताई गुलाम मोहिउद्दीन अस्सलाम वालेकुम लव यू वालेकुम सलाम गुलाम मोहिउद्दीन कह रहा है कितना अच्छा नाम ये सबसे अच्छा नाम है गुलाम अब्द अब्दुल्ला हम सब अब्दुल्ला हैं हम सब अल्लाह के गुलाम हैं <laughs> अच्छा खाला उमर आगे बता रही है I agree with you in Pakistan husbands mostly treat their wives very badly I have seen it in most of the families in Islam our Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam treated his wives with respect and love but sadly hmm, our People abuse this relation. Yes, it is very sad. It is very true. Uh, Pakistani husbands are not following the example of the Holy Prophet. Hazrat Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam itne pyar se aur izzat dete the unki biwiyon ko bhi. To Pakistani mard mardon ko main bata raha hu apni biwiyon ko pyar se aur is it? Unko is it be de do? Inshallah, yes, maybe tabdili aegi. Abzal Chaudhary, sir, excuse me, everyone has to die one day. If your followers decide to construct a shrine on your grave, what are your views about? <laughs> I don't think they should construct a shrine. I think they should. <laughs> I don't know what. Ibrahim Avasi, sir, how is USA situation nowadays? I think it's getting better because more and more people are understanding the truth. The truth is coming out gradually, but more and more people are understanding what is really going on in the world. What is really going on in the world? There is a very powerful satanic cult which is trying to gain full control of the world. And this whole coronavirus scam is their program to try to bring the world into their control. They created the virus, they're promoting it, they're, especially they're promoting fake news about it, that, oh, it's so dangerous, you must lock down your country, you must stay in your house, you must wear a mask, da, da, da. So people are starting to understand, just like only day before yesterday now, was it? Day before that. On Saturday, President Trump had a big rally, and people... More than, I think, 10 million people watched that rally on the internet, plus maybe millions more on television. So many people saw that rally. And in that rally, President Trump is promoting this understanding that don't believe the mass media. It's full of fake news controlled by satanic people. So more and more people in USA are understanding this. So it's a very good situation in USA is improving. Acha. 
सबहत अरशद आपका आज आपका मौजू बहुत अच्छा है हाँ बहुत अच्छा है बहुत ज़रूरी है कि लोग इस बात को समझें औरतों को भी समझना चाहिए और मर्दों को भी समझना चाहिए कि औरतें ही आलमगीर अमन को कायम कर देंगी अलीना मजहर कह रही है हैव यू एवर मेट बाबा जी सूफी बरकत अली लुधियानी साहेब नो आई नॉट आई नवर मेट हिम बट आई हैव वॉच हिज वीडियोज इन विच ही सेज पाकिस्तान विल बिकम द लीडर ऑफ द वर्ल्ड यूनाइटेड नेशंस विल मेक इट्स डिसीजन बेस्ड ऑन द गाइडेंस फ्राम पाकिस्तान सो आई लव हिम वेरी मच बट आई नवर मेट हिम पर्सनली इन ईदर इन बॉडी और बाई spiritual means but i love him and respect him very much wonderful wonderful saint bukhari sayyid assalam alaikum may allah bless you and your family allah allah thank you very much sayyidna sallallahu alaihi wasallam thank you sir kaula umar says dear sir alan kiesler please remember me in your prayers may almighty allah give you loads of blessings i mean ya malik kaula umar par rahm farma उसको ताकत दे अकल दे कि वो भी आलमगीर अमन कायम करने में अपने हिस्सा ले सकेगी <laughs> या अल्लाह खौला अमर उमर उमर खौला उमर पर रहम फरमा कितना अच्छा नाम उमर खौला उमर को भी उमर शरीफ रजी अल्लाह तला जैसे ताकतवर बना ले <laughs> Achha Rimsha Khan sir many islamic clerics have given fatwa that women are weak only men should hold authoritative positions in country even they support that men can beat women did holy prophet muhammad peace be upon him beat his women his wives no he respected them he even asked for their advice and he followed their advice often though this unfortunately many islamic scholars got the wrong idea from tradition it's not from the example of the holy prophet muhammad peace be upon him it's not from the injunctions of the holy quran it is from tradition usually society's traditions which are not really islamic there are so many things that has crept into islam from other traditions uh so we must stand up and say boldly my dear islamic clerics uh you are very wonderful scholarly individuals but you can make mistakes and we are afraid you have made a mistake you are not following the example of the holy prophet muhammad peace be upon him just try to understand how he treated his wives really and his daughter fatima he treated her with great respect he would stand up when she came in the room so this is the way men should treat women with great respect and honor considering women like their mothers we should treat women uh, all men should treat women like their mothers with great respect and honor that is how the holy prophet peace be upon him acted so why don't you act that way my dear islamic clerics <laughs> uh, this is wrong fatwa based on misunderstanding i am saying that boldly okay maram masood says sudhir ahmed don't talk this much please let others to talk in comments because answering to every question you asked is mean that not letting others opportunity to ask and get answer please don't mind but uh hmm. simple request okay but he does have very good questions always but it's nice to let others also ask yes Sayyid Atar Qadri says assalamu alaikum baba ji as an individual how can we contribute to world peace kindly guide us also please advise whom shall we follow and whom not so uh, we can contribute to world peace by becoming peaceful ourselves by treating our friends and family members and neighbors and others with peaceful mind and intention speak kindly serve uh, world peace will come when we serve each other not when we try to gain control over the other hmm? So this is why women will establish world peace because men have more of a tendency to want to control and dominate and women's natural tendency is to be more serving so it is when the service mood is promoted then world peace will come so uh, become peaceful yourself 
And uh, that will be one thing you can do to contribute to world peace. And how can you become peaceful? By always remembering Allah, 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 Allah. and praying to the most merciful source of all peace. <laughs> oh God, uh, give me peace. May I be an instrument of thy peace. <laughs> St. Francis prayed always, May I, I be an instrument of thy peace, O God. So when we become peaceful, when we pray to God to become a cause of peace, and when we become peaceful and kind to others, then that's what we can do to contribute. Because it all begins with me. There's a very famous prayer. Uh, let there be peace in the world, then let it begin with me. <laughs> so... Okay, Khawla Umar says, I have heard FBI was trying to overthrow his government, but he succeeded in stopping it. Yes, the FBI or CIA or whatever, the satanic people in these organizations, they try to and they succeed in so many cases to overthrow many governments, including Pakistani governments, and they, if they could not overthrow them, like they are the ones who are behind the overthrow of... Zulfiqar Ali Bhutto, they used President Zia, Southern, he was not president then, they used General Zia to overthrow him. So, And they were the ones who, they even killed President Zia when he would not go along with what they wanted. So, I'm not surprised <laughs> if they tried to overthrow Imran Khan too, because he is a good man, sincere, not corrupt. So they could not control him, so they're trying to overthrow him. But we will pray. I pray daily for both uh, Prime Minister Imran Khan and also President Trump. May they succeed in their sincere mission. To They're both patriots. Imran Khan is working for the good of Pakistan, not for the good of himself or his family like the others used to do. <laughs> and President Trump is also a real patriot. He loves America. Maybe even he loves America more than the world, but... Anyway, I think we should love the world more than our country, or yet equally at least. But he is a great patriot. He is doing everything he can, and he's accomplishing incredible things in helping America get rid of this satanic control. So, but yes, it's true that these satanic people in the CIA, FBI, Department of Justice, they were doing all sorts of, have been doing all sorts of horrible things for a long, long time. And President Trump is getting rid of those corrupt people in the FBI, in the CIA, in the Department of Justice, and everywhere throughout America. He is removing the corrupt people. So that's very good news that Imran Khan was able to stop the attempt of some people to overthrow his government. Let us all pray every day. Please, I ask you, please pray for Imran Khan, that God will protect him and enable him to achieve his goal of making Pakistan a real land of the pure. <laughs> of course, he is a very good guidance in the form of his spiritual teacher, his good wife, Bushra Bibi, is a great Sufi saint, and uh, he is working together with her. And he considers her as his spiritual teacher, just as I consider my wife as my spiritual teacher. So this is the key to success of men, is to work together in harmony and love, with their wives and with other women also, but we must accept the guidance of those women who are able to uh, be peaceful in the sense of not trying to establish their own ego above others. I've seen it again and again and again. Of course, women also have the tendency, like men do, but much more uh, men have a tendency to dominate and the women have the tendency to cooperate. And men have the tendency to rationally analyze everything and figure out what to do. And women have the more of a tendency to intuitively perceive what is to be done. So the two need to work together. Both are needed. Rationality and intuition both must work together. So I don't say women should dominate the men. I say women and men should cooperate together. Uh, and when women are given their proper position, then world peace will come. Okay, Abdul Hakshar says, pray for me. Oh God, bless Abdul Hakshar. Muhammad Wasim Raza says, 
He's also required. Many times I've <laughs> prayed for you, Muhammad Wasim Raza. Okay, yeah, Malik. Bless Muhammad Wasim Raza. Okay, Ali Turk says, everyone should pray for President Trump and Prime Minister Imran Khan's success. Thank you very much. I believe that we, we should, every day, make it a point, every day, to remember President Trump, remember Prime Minister Imran Khan, and pray for God to protect them, to bless them with intelligence and strength and courage, uh, and all success, because their desire is good. Whereas most government leaders, not only Pakistan and America, most government leaders throughout the world, they are selfish, and they lie. And they cheat. But President Trump and President Prime Minister Imran Khan are not liars and cheaters. They're telling the truth and they're working very hard for the truth and for justice. Insaf. <laughs> okay, Khawla Umar says, Prime Minister Imran Khan is introducing science education in madrasas, which will make a great difference in changing mindset of our general public as their innocent minds are molded wrongly. Yes. Very, very sad that uh, the madrasas in Pakistan were basically captured by ignorant, even fanatical uh, elements who call themselves Muslims. Of course, they are Muslims, but they have a very wrong understanding of Islam. So those people gained control of madrasas and were teaching very, very wrong ideas about Islam. Islam means love and truth, justice and peace, kindness, and they were teaching a different mindset. So it's very, very good that Imran Khan, Prime Minister Saib, is introducing in the madrasas science education, different mentality. Of course, there's different types of science too. I hope he will introduce the broader science with the spiritual element. I, I think he will. Ghani Khan Usmani says, peace be upon you, automatically translated. Thank you very much. Wa alaikum salam. Ji Bushra Sarfraz. Khatikal says, Khatikal says, Assalamu alaikum, sir. Happy to see you. May Allah bless you. I mean, thank you very much. May Allah bless you too. Linda Scholler Boyle, the best shrine ever is to live the truths you are teaching. Thank you very much. Yeah. Linda Scholler Boyle is my cousin, or not first cousin, but distant cousin. And uh, you have made a very nice point. Thank you. Because somebody said, what? After I die, they want to put a shrine on my grove. No. The best shrine you can make for anyone is to live the truths that person was teaching. So I hope you will build that shrine for me, <laughs> that you will live the truths that I have been teaching. And what is that? Peace. Love. Be peaceful and loving to each other. And that will be the best shrine you can ever make to anybody. <laughs> Rim Shahan, share your experience with aliens. Um, I've done this so many times also. I've got to put that in my frequently asked questions also. People are always asking. But be briefly, I will say, when I was nine years old, I met a very loving extraterrestrial woman who, uh, she was so kind to me, spoke so sweetly and lovingly that I felt she was my real mother. And when I got home, I even told my mother, you're not my real mother. <laughs> so that was my first experience when I was nine. I met her again when I was about 45 uh, or so. <clears throat> and uh, <clears throat> anyway, uh, the most important of all experiences I ever had with extraterrestrials is when she took me off planet and uh, took me to a meeting that was going on between different extraterrestrial species. And they were actually discussing our planet Earth and whether they should prevent a world war. Because this was 1998, and they knew a world war was going to start on our planet in 1999. And uh, <clears throat> so they were discussing whether they should stop it. They evidently had stopped nuclear wars from happening before. and. Uh, there are actually reports in the press, which I have posted on my Facebook page before, uh, of UFOs, disks, flying saucers, coming over nuclear facilities and shutting down the missiles. So you can do some little research on that. Uh, what was the name of that base again? In Montana, in America, the biggest 
center where all they had the intercontinental ballistic missiles. This was in the 1970s, I think. Robert Salas is his name, the man's name. Uh, R-O-B-E-R-T-S-A-L-A-S. Uh, boy, I wish I could remember the name of that air base now. Um, Malstrom, yes. Malstrom Air Force Base, M-A-L-S-T-R-O-M, Mel Base, and Robert Salas. If you look those, do a search for that, you will see his story, how he himself observed these orange-colored glowing disks came over their uh, base and shut down, one after another, shut down at least a dozen or 20, I don't remember exact number, many of the intercontinental ballistic missiles that were armed with nuclear warheads, they were shut down. They could not operate them. So the extraterrestrials have done it before, and they were discussing whether they should do it again. In 1999 was coming up, and international nuclear war was scheduled. It was destined even, we can say. But in that meeting, some other spiritual personality appeared and instructed everyone, no, we will be merciful. <laughs> we will uh, prevent the war. Whether you prevent it or not, he said, he was definitely a representative of higher authority. And he said, uh, mercy, this war will be stopped. <laughs> and it was. There was almost a war, right? In July, June, July of 1999, the Cargill War, uh, it would have broken out into a nuclear exchange if God had not been merciful and changed that mm -hmm. destined world war. He stopped it. God stopped it, not those extraterrestrials. They were, they were discussing whether they should stop it. They were actually deciding not to stop it when this representative of God came and explained to them, it's okay to stop it. They were saying... Uh, we have stopped it before, and therefore humanity has not awoken. We, humanity has remained sleeping in ignorance. If they had had a nuclear war, they would have waked up. They would have awoken. Uh, it would have been very shocking, of course, when millions and billions of people even get killed, how that would change humanity's attitude. So they were arguing, some of them were arguing, that we should not stop this war. We should let it happen. That will bring humanity to its senses. Um, but God's order was mercy. <laughs> so it was prevented. So that was Armageddon, the long-predicted international nuclear holocaust, which was destined, and it was prophesied, and it was true prophecies, not wrong prophecies. They were correct prophecies. But that destiny was changed. God creates destiny, and God can change destiny. Allah Pak is all-powerful. <laughs> he can do whatever he wants. So, wo likhta hai, insaan ko ye ho jayega. Likhne wala, us, kya takdeer, us, ko tabdeel bhi kar sakta hai. Jo wo likhta hai, wo usko tabdeel bhi kar sakta hai. So, that was the most incredible experience I ever had with Aliens. There were many different species of aliens in that meet meeting. All right. <clears throat> Nasim Aziz, your Urdu is great because I was living in Pakistan as a child from 1947 to 1965, so I learned Urdu just like a Pakistani. In fact, Punjabi too. My first words were Punjabi, my mother told me. <laughs> I spoke Punjabi before Urdu or English. <laughs> So I learned Urdu just like Pakistani, so that's why I speak good Urdu. Sir, Alina Mazhar asks, what is the understanding of time and different timelines? Uh, yes, you can look on my uh, website, allintelligentlife.com. I have written about this exact question. Uh, and I've spoken many times. This is another one of those frequently asked questions I must add there. So we usually think of time as a river flowing. But actually, time is more like a plain, or a delta, you might say, where there are many different streams. So there are different timelines that exist, and we can switch timelines. Uh, time is not at all what we think of as a river flowing. Uh, it's amazing. 
and we can shift timelines by our own efforts, by our own prayers, I should say, by our own uh, attitude, by our prayers, we can actually shift timelines. And that is what happened. I was just discussing how World War III, you might say, or International Nuclear Holocaust, which was the timeline we were on. It was the destined timeline. It was shifted. It was changed. And we came to a new timeline in which that nuclear holocaust, long expected, long prophesied, will not happen. So, hard to believe. <laughs> it's hard to believe, but yes, that can happen. Maram Masood, Sudhir Ahmed, Sudhir Ahmed, don't talk this much, or maybe the same. Okay, Imran ul Haq Sadiqi, 1,24,000. Ambiya Karam, messenger, are all men. So what can I say now? Um, were they all men? We assume that, but maybe they weren't. I don't, I don't know. There are, uh, just like in Native American tradition, the greatest of all the messengers of God in North America. Uh, she is called White Buffalo Calf Woman, a woman. She was definitely a prophet from God. So I think there are some women also, but we don't accept that. We won't believe it. No, no. They must all be men. Maybe they were. I don't know. But uh, I, I have no knowledge that it's impossible for a woman to be a messenger. Okay. Alina Mazhar. How women can make themselves spiritually strong? Just the same way men can make themselves spiritually strong. By zikr. Most important thing is zikr and by following the principles of truthfulness, honesty, and kindness and compassion. But the most important thing always in every religion too that I know of, maybe not all, everyone, but almost everyone, uh, they have this practice of zikr, prayer and meditation, especially by calling on the name of God. So that's by far the most important thing in most religious traditions. So practice calling on Allah, 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 from the depth of the heart, not just on the tongue, Allah, 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 Allah no, no. <laughs> from the depth of the heart, begging, oh God, please guide me, please let me serve you. That will make anyone <laughs> spiritually strong, also women too. <laughs> okay, and many other things, studying scriptures and not only Allah, any name of God in any language, but that's the most important thing, I think. Maram Masood says, I want to talk about Murshid as I have so, have so, have so. Many questions. Oh, I have so many questions, but not in comments. I want to call you, sir, on Messenger, please, if you get time. You can send me a private message, and I will look for it. Maram Masood, I should have a pen to write down these names, but I will try to remember that. And uh, <clears throat> Rimsha Khan, you have once said that Kashmir will get independence and Kashmir will Kashmiris will handle their internal affairs, while Pakistan and India handle their external affairs. Sir, will there be any border between Kashmir and Pakistan, or there will be free movement between Kashmir and Pakistan? There will be free movement, definitely. Uh, I think uh, there will be free movement, movement all over the world. When there's world peace, then uh, people from different countries will be able to travel freely from one country to the other. Just like within Pakistan, you can travel from Punjab to Sindh or to Northwest Frontier Province. You can go from one province, one state, I should say. <laughs> Excuse me, I'm dated from Khyber uh, Pakhtunkhwa to Punjab or to Baluchistan without any border. There is a border there. There are different states. They have their different uh, leaders and their different... So, But there was no uh, need for any uh, visa <laughs> or any passport control at the border. So there will be free movement, definitely, between Kashmir and Pakistan, even between, I think, all the countries of the world that will be coming. Okay, Ahsan Ali, Salam. How are you, sir? Where from? I am from Pakistan. <laughs> I lived in Pakistan the first 18 years of my life. I was a resident, legal resident of Pakistan, 
but I was American. My parents were American, so I had American citizenship. So <clears throat> just like we could talk about African Americans, <laughs> they are people originally from Africa living in America, and uh, but Pakistani Americans, people from Pakistan who are living in America. So I am a American Pakistani. <laughs> I'm American citizen, but I lived in Pakistan the first 18 years of my life. I was mostly in Pakistan and my parents were working there. So where am I from? Am I from Pakistan or am I from USA? I don't know, but I'm American Pakistani. Now I'm living in America. But I hope I can settle in Pakistan eventually. That's my desire. Ibrahim Abrasi says, Sir, can you guide me about scholarships undergraduate students for Pakistan? No, I really am not a advisor for students. I don't know about scholarships for them. Aisha Lukman, Aslam Alaikum, you stole my heart after saying this truth. May you live long. Thank you. Yes, absolutely, Kaula Omar says. I will also pray for Imran Khan and also Trump, as both are sincere leaders for their own country. Yes, very. thank you very much. Uh, I cannot read all the comments now. I'm going to try to go quickly through some and find some other good ones. Um, I do have an interview at 9 o'clock, so I can't go on too long. Asad Bambud, Aslam alaikum, sir. What are your views about physical appearance of Dajjal? Thanks. I don't know. These physical descriptions, they may be symbolic. Some people say like that, that the one eye means something different than just, you know, blind in one eye. I really don't know, but I, sorry, I can't really answer your question because I really don't have views. All I, My view is that it may be symbolic. I don't know. Okay. <clears throat> I'm trying to find uh, Rashif Ali Khan. Sir, oh, since women are the topic of the day, what are your thoughts about Nancy Pelosi? Nancy Pelosi is a Satanist. <laughs> She's a very evil, deceitful woman. Uh, sorry to say that. <laughs> Hillary Clinton also. Not that all women are going to bring about peace, no. <laughs> but uh, I will just say openly, it's very obvious to anyone who studies a little bit carefully what she's done and what she's doing. Just like when uh, the coronavirus began and President Trump was closing the border, Chinese, he forbade people from coming from China to USA. And Nancy Pelosi said, no, no, no. She was in San Francisco. She's from San Francisco. She went in Chinatown and she said, no, no, no. This is not good what President Trump is doing. We shouldn't be love the Chinese people. This is not good. And then later, she's criticizing President Trump. Oh, why he didn't uh, do enough to stop this virus from spreading in America. Hmm? She's a liar. She's deceitful. So, <laughs> but there are many very good women, honest women, but she is not one of them. <laughs> okay. Ibrahim Abbasi, sir, can you tell us about your teachers? I've had so many teachers, I've said this many times also, my mother was my first spiritual teacher and my father also, and Alan Hunter, Reverend Dr. Alan Hunter, who was my parents' mentor, he also was my first teacher beside my parents. And uh, I guess uh, the most important teacher I had for many years was Prabhupada. He was from India uh, and he taught universal love Actually, what I am teaching, I learned from him also. Uh, and uh, Baba Farid Ganshakar, Ramatul uh, I met him personally, physically. So he told me he would not, I wanted, I accepted him as my teacher, as my murshid. And he said no. <laughs> but I accept him anyway as my teacher because he has also given me very profound, deep guidance. And uh, of course, Holy Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, is also my teacher. In fact, uh, I was told there is Oasi Silsila. Sayyid Zaid Hamid Sahib told me this, that there is a Silsila of those people who have Holy Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, as their murshid. So I guess I'm in Oasi Silsila also because Holy Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, has blessed me to teach me personally many things. So he's undoubtedly my most important teacher. But now my main teacher is my good wife, Carol, or Fatima. 
she is also called. She has many names. Kalili, the first name I knew her by. She was a great uh, anointive American spiritual teacher before I met her. And now she continues to be very, very deep, one of the deepest people I've ever known. And she literally speaks the voice of God. I feel that way. Not always, but sometimes she speaks and it is not coming from herself. So that is the sort of teacher we need, one who can reveal to us the insights coming from God. So she is my main teacher now. Farhan Karim says, Where are ET? Are they live in this universe or other universes? How can we meet them? Are they live in other dimensions? All of them through. They live in this universe, they live in other universes, they live in this dimension, they live in other dimensions. Uh, and how can we meet them? Well, I always say, uh, just you can pray and meditate. I don't know how to meet them. They sometimes have come to me, but I've never been able to go to them. <laughs> but there is a program, Stephen Greer is his name, who started this program, Dr. Stephen, S-T-E-V-E-N, Greer, G-R-E-E-R. -E -E and he has a program called, uh, I think, Ambassador Program, he calls it. It's to uh, be ambassadors to other ET races. And he has enabled thousands of people to meet with extraterrestrials personally. Uh, so you can look, do a search for him. I think a serious disclosure is the name of his website. website. But look up Stephen Greer because he is uh, doing that, uh, helping people meet ETs. I don't know how to do it actually. Acha Sayyid Ghaz Jafri says, Assalamu alaikum sir, a few days ago you have told us this word, Almighty made by messenger, please explain us. I always feel happy to see you, though I just come know about you not more than a few days ago. Um, through YouTube, I learned some important things from you, dear sir. Please remember me and my family in your prayers. Ya Allah, Sayyid Ghaus Jafri Parraham, or Riski family Parraham Farma. I don't know what you mean. Uh, you have told us this word, Almighty, made by messenger. Please explain us. I'm not sure what word you mean, um, but the Holy Prophet appeared to me physically. Not Well, it wasn't a dream. I was awake, but it was a, a, a vision, you might say. Um, and he told me, first word he said was, don't worry. <laughs> and uh, I don't know which word you meant, because he said many words to me. But he confirmed about Pakistan about the position of Pakistan and uh, he told me the word of uh, most amazing thing I think I ever learned from the Holy Prophet was about Kartarpur corridor that this is the our first great victory in the Ghazwa Hind and the culmination of Armageddon and the sign of world peace that is that word if you one word that was the most important message most Astonishing message, maybe not most important, but extremely important message that this Kartarpur in uh, only about four kilometers in Pakistan, about four kilometers from the Indian border, and the authorities of Pakistan and India agreed that Indian citizens can come into Kartarpur. This was just last November, uh, without a visa, without a passport, mm -hmm. only within it. So now that's most amazing development. And that is the beginning of world peace, Kartarpur. <laughs> okay, but you can see uh, those videos, which I've explained it more. Samam Hassan, where are you these days? I am in uh, Esparto, California, Northern California. Okay, Rimsha Khan says, thank you, sir. You talk about women today. I feel so good. I mostly feel so dis, so degraded as most of Islamic scholars tag women as weak and deny their basic rights. Yes, I've already said before today, someone asked, those Islamic clerics, unfortunately, they have misunderstood Islam. That's another thing I can say. Holy Prophet told me in 2012 when I was in Manchester, England, staying with a Pakistani family, uh, the Holy Prophet appeared to me and he told me, uh, oh, yes. 
I'm sorry, I got interrupted by the gentleman who's going to start my, in just 15 minutes or so, we're going to have a live interview. So um, I have to end now. But um, let me just say, yes, so the Islamic clerics tag women as weak and deny their basic rights. And uh, so the Holy Prophet does not accept that women are weak. Of course, in some ways, women are weak. They're physically, they're weaker than men. Uh, and they're more emotional than men. Uh, so in some ways, in those ways, women are weaker in terms of rationality. But in terms of kindness, in terms of compassion, in terms of cooperation, and in terms of intuition, which is very important, uh, women are more powerful than men. So men and women are different, not the same. Uh, but they're equal. And Holy Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, did everything he could to bring up the standard of women. Women were so degraded by the men uh, at the time of the Holy Prophet, peace be upon him. They had no rights. They were not even considered persons in some sense. And he gave them uh, many rights that they did not have before. Right to own land even. Uh, right to be a legal entity. <laughs> before, women were not even considered legal entities. They had no rights. They could not even own any property. So. Holy Prophet Muhammad raised the status, status of women tremendously. So these Islamic clerics don't know how to follow the example of the Holy Prophet. <laughs> they should be raising the status of women, not denying them their rights. Okay, thank you all very, very much. And uh, I look forward to these daily chats at this time very much. Uh, and if uh, I will post here as soon as I can. I've already asked that gentleman how everyone will be able to watch my chat. So it is beginning in about 10 minutes. So I will post here on the description of this, and I will also post on Facebook how you can watch that live interview uh, after about 10 or 15 minutes. Thank you very much. Peace be with you. Allah Hafiz.